What's up? Let's cut through the thick tape. We're already on a first name basis anyway. Is Marvel Rivals an Overwatch copy? No, it's just a hero shooter where everyone plays their limited roles in a teamwork based match where if certain roles don't play to the best of their ability, the game becomes a lopsided steamroll where then your own team starts to fight each other and you say, hey, might as well join in. So you start fighting as well. But Skipper, I just really gotta know, are the heroes copies? No, it's just that one dashes around on a recharge with dual SMGs and has an ultimate that auto locks. There's also this guy who swings around and smashes into the ground and can gain health at the click of a single button. There's also a flying based character that could shoot projectiles and also shoot lasers. There's also a small character that could transform into a bigger, stronger version where when they die, they go back to the smaller person and can gain the ability to get big again. There's even a character that requires no skill and auto locks with an ability that lets them flee whenever they're almost dead. And that's just fun to play against. Marvel Rivals is an Overwatch copy, but there's two Overwatches now, so uh, which one is it copying exactly? I know the title is Rage Bait and I'm being tongue in cheek, but being a copy of something isn't necessarily a bad thing by default. Unless you're Overwatch 2, where you copied yourself, but even worse. How the hell do you even do that? Blizzard is just that special. What I said about Marvel Rivals copying Overwatch mechanics is true. The game definitely copied a lot of them, but Overwatch itself isn't original either. And luckily I don't need to explain why to you since someone did that years ago in a video where they were making the exact same point. This chart from Shammy breaks down all the Overwatch characters that were in the game at the time in 2018. And what mechanics they have that are inspired or straight up ripped from other games. A single Overwatch character is a cluster of copied and original mechanics making something new, like a wacky Play-Doh creation. And to pay it forward, the same thing has now happened with Marvel Rivals. It happened before with a game like Paladins, I guess, but most of you didn't play that since you thought it was a mobile game or the Overwatch you play if you're poor. I know this because I played Paladins before I got Overwatch for Christmas. But it's not as good as Overwatch, of course, it's a little bit lower resolution. This though, is third person and cartoony. It has Spider-Man, but more importantly, it has the best superhero, Star-Lord. A character like Star-Lord is a combination of Ryan, Tracer, and Soldier 76. Being like Tracer since he also has dual energy SMGs that recharge by spinning your wrist while also having dashing abilities. And with his dashing abilities, his SMGs automatically reload like McCree's dash to his Red Dead revolver. It's and yeah, the ultimate makes you lock and shoot really fast, straight from Mr. Call of Duty himself. All these derived mechanics have now made something original. I mean, this discussion about originality is referencing a chart made by a YouTuber I watched when I was a goddamn kid. Let's chat about originality. Originality in any game deserves praise, but it isn't such a strong positive quality that it makes a game exempt from its negative qualities in comparison to products that even copied said thing's originality. A game like Splitgate exists because of Halo and Portal, but could still be compared and contrasted to Halo Infinite. Unlucky for both, this is a battle of the undead, so I'm gonna let them rot and use a better example. Riot Games are solely successful because of how good they are at being unoriginal. Valve created original games like Dota and Counter-Strike, then League of Legends was created to compete with Dota and Valorant to compete with Counter-Strike. Both clones eventually got their own identities and fan bases that they could sell skins to at the cost of their mortgage. These rivaling communities are pretty nice as well, racist and evil, and possibly may like children. Who even plays this game anymore, hates their life, and possibly may like children. But what's undeniable is that both copies have their hands in their genre's pots of player base and have converted those who once played the former original game to their game. Copying is just the consequence of competition, and in the case of Riot Games, they have been more active and engaging with their communities than Valve has since Valve didn't need to because they never expected competition or coasting off of only originality. Even when it came to money, they were getting lazy and relied on the community making skins while they threw lobsters from their million dollar yachts to then stuff their face with even more lobster after a summer sale. So when a game like Valorant came and took out a big chunk of player base from the stable cash flow of a banded CSGO that was only focused on cosmetics, they're forced to make CS2, taking the game to the Source 2 engine and putting an effort to compete and had to introduce new cosmetic crates and try to make the game great again. It's not that that great still, but it ain't dead. This pressure is why even in a weird state, CS2 gets more attention than a game like TF2. Because no one is really competing with TF2, so why care to improve something that people like anyway for what it is? And if those left still like it, just keep adding cosmetics and community made stuff. Overwatch though, in all honesty, is an original game format. And once upon a time, people thought it was going to be a copy of something like TF2, but now that time has passed, we see that's clearly not the case, and that both games are left to rot. But while TF2 is rotting in its good state mechanically, suffering from external problems, Overwatch was resurrected to get ripped apart and become an undead freak of nature, while at the same time leaving a gap for competition.
A game like TF2 and even Plants vs Zombies Garden Warfare 1 and 2 are built for fun variety chaos with team based objectives that have many different ways to play. It's not that serious in terms of cooperation and is made for fun, but still has a skill gap for better players. A game like Overwatch is more structured like organized sports, relying on communication and team strategy with every character being a piece on the chessboard. When you play a character, you're locked into that character's role, and victory is determined by your ability to play that character and how you play them with other characters to the best of their ability. This is why I make the comparison of sports. In sports, a role player is trained to do their task to the best of their ability to help their team, even if it means they have to compromise on being creative or having fun. I mention him a lot on this channel because he's my schnookums pookie bear goat, but it makes complete sense why one of the best basketball players in the world, Luka Doncic, plays a game like Overwatch and is a top 500 tank. Play of the game. Find the hole. Luka Doncic is a point guard for the Dallas Mavericks, which means he runs the offense in a 5v5 basketball setting, where his goal is to help his teammates, which could help the team. But he could also tap into his own bag, which also helps the team. All while at the same time, the role players have to help the point guard by getting open or setting screens, and by doing this, they will help themselves and help the team. As the head of the snake, he can rely on himself or rely on others, and depending on his actions, both can have consequences or poor results. This can make Overwatch extremely fun at times, feeling like a tug-of-war battle where single decisions and actions could determine a game. One second, you might think it's over, until surprisingly, Don't it's worry. not. Daddy's home. Oh my god! But Overwatch isn't like sports. It's a video game and has a lot of meta problems, and the format is not consistent. Actually, it might be like sports. Marvel Rivals even being anticipated is a big problem because it means that Overwatch 2 has competition. And if there's competition with a lot of people happy and satisfied with that competition that is copying your format, that means there's a lot wrong back at home base. Death left Blizzard. No shots. Overwatch 2 is just a glorified update, which offers nothing new. Here's just recycled content from the first game, and here's all the shiny stuff you get to spend money on. They just completely announced that the last four years of hard work on their PvE is just being scrapped. That was the whole point of Overwatch 2! Blizzard as a studio is collapsing, Jeff Watch left, every employee is fired or going to jail. If you aren't at all tapped into the internet, it's been an echo chamber for a while. That Overwatch 2 sucks and ruined my family and killed my dog. This isn't a unique take to have. Made from the controversies of an abandoned game with a blood-sucking publisher and upper management chaos where the devs were drinking breast milk and harassing women, it makes sense that Overwatch 2 is a predatory clusterfuck of a game that has let people down, made false promises, screwed over its consumers, and has destroyed the game that people originally loved while not letting them ever be able to play it again. And will never recover, in general, from the basic word-to-mouth record it has. But I have a confession, I, I still play this game. I hate Overwatch 2. There's so much I hate about this game, and I hate it because I once liked it so much and enjoyed the skeleton of what it was as a concept. I hate being alive! I hate being alive! I hate breathing! I hate being alive! I'm in tremendous pain! I'm in tremendous pain! Help me! Help me! Help me! I'm a fat fucking pig! If you hop on Overwatch after not playing for a hot minute, you can have a great time coming back. Using that character you used to pop off with or invested a lot of time enjoying from lore to character design to then realize they have been gutted to then see that the game has also been gutted. That big criticism of the game being an Overwatch 1.3 instead of 2 that people used to dunk on the game with uh, is not true at all. This game is so different from Overwatch 1, but not in a way that it's become unfamiliar over time by so much stuff getting added, but rather that it's regressed from what made that game once so enjoyable. And is why I said Marvel Rivals is an Overwatch copy. An Overwatch 1 copy, because holy shit, playing that game's beta was a breath of fresh air. just the beta, not even the main game, fueling me with those old feelings that Overwatch once gave me in the prime days and has put on full display of what Overwatch 2 has been doing wrong. Especially now that the beta is over, going back to Overwatch 2 just feels like shit and I just can't escape that feeling of wanting to play this instead. Anyways, I should be getting back to hell now.
The largest change from Overwatch 1 was going from 6v6 to 5v5. I just felt the nerds getting mad and rolling their eyes. To those who don't play this game, this is a big argument and gets discussed a lot by the seven people who do still play this game. By going from 6v6 to 5v5, you change the whole format of how the game used to work, since not every character is fully adapted to work in 5v5. And the community has hated this format change since the game came out because it sucks, and the devs have continued to double down on it. Which doesn't make sense because when the game first came out, they also released a terrible competitive system where you had to win five matches to find out if you ranked up or down. And yeah, it was so bad that the game got a better system now that still isn't as good as Overwatch 1. I kinda get it because to change this 5v5 format means you change the entire identity of Overwatch 2, making it not so different from Overwatch 1, which is a self-report that the change was unnecessary to begin with other than lazy excuses like managing Q and meta proving that Overwatch 2 is a lazy, unnecessary game. 6v6 meant that you could make playstyles around six combinations of heroes that typically being two tanks, two damage characters, and two supports. But you could also do weird wacky shit like three tanks and three supports or, well this was until Roll Queue came out because they added a character that broke how the game played. But with 5v5 Roll Queue, everyone now has to commit to whatever role they choose with only one tank being available. While Overwatch is already limited compared to other games, not having flexibility to out the box playstyles outside of how they play in that role, with 5v5 now it's even more limited which made the game so unenjoyable that a lot of people just dropped it. Losing a player makes the other five now have to compensate way more than before, making tank have a tremendous amount of responsibility where previously in 6v6, the matches were more chaotic but easier to manage since you had another tank to combo with and release that tension. But now you don't got a tank to combo with, which makes every other tank the star of the show when before a lot of them were just the right hand man. Like Reinhardt worked great with Zarya, where she used her bubble that helped him when he was on the front line. Or maybe you did Zarya Diva, where Zarya was on the front line. Or you did Diva Reinhardt, which meant even though you might not have a mobile frontline tank, you got someone else with mobility. One super tank now makes a lot of these characters strong to play, but kind of useless because they have clear counters, which force you to either switch off the people you enjoy playing or to struggle. This then creates a cycle of mental chaos that if you are struggling as tank, you're just going to hear constant bitching with your whole team mad at you for not caring cancer. Go Reinhardt, I don't care if you got Shatter, go Winston, bro. Better than you. I don't play Nine, and all you have to do is just go Winston. Well, it works well with I'm not trying. And I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I find toxicity funny. What I don't find funny is getting banned for simply standing up for myself. Toxic ass moron idiots. I want to play Overwatch, not Counterwatch. Overwatch 2 is so meta focused that characters completely shit on other choices, making you have to switch to see success. Creating annoying matches of constant counter picks. Being a super tank who is strong makes the game more limited, stressful, and predictable. And to fix this and make tanks even more fun, Blizzard's solution was just to make the tanks even stronger, which fixed nothing and also made tanks even less fun for anybody else to play against, including tanks. And by tank being strong and being on the front line, your DPS and support also struggle because of a character like Sojourn, who builds up an instant kill railgun ability by shooting these bullet sponges that then can be used to kill those squishy players. Squishy. Also a badly designed character that came out in Overwatch 2 that is heavily picked because of it being that viable. This slugfest of gameplay is horrible for tempo, a match just turns into two tanks getting fed by healers that are also so poorly designed with bullshit mechanics. How is that even fair? That are pretty much DPS, all while actual DPS just can't kill either. Uh, my ram gets slept? The armor, he just lives because, guys, tanks aren't tanky enough. Roles like Reaper, who's a tank buster, is now useless since you can't bust any tanks and has to solely be played as a flanking support killer. And if you are a character that doesn't have great mobility and finishing power, you're going to pretty much die to supports who have everything. Overwatch's support class ruined Overwatch. It ruined the first game and it still continues to ruin this game. It was the class that was criticized because it was born to play with Mercy being an uninspired auto turret compared to fun classes like Lucio and Zenyatta that had even more to their kit other than just heal and stay alive. Then Ana came out and was fun and had balanced counter Play. Then they added Moira, annoying, no skill, lock on, Symmetra reincarnated, and then we got Brigette. This bum ass, overpowered ass headache that made the whole game circle around this bitch. Annoying stun, armor that's stronger than heals, no brain to play, a true nightmare character. And then they add Baptiste, an even more autopilot idiot where all you have to do is click shift and the people around you get their health back. Also, you could put down a gadget that makes people invincible in it, and the character does okay damage and can jump around. And for the funniest joke, they add Kiriko, who does crazy damage, has the best ult in the game, and a mechanic that stop shit from happening and it's not even her fucking alt. Have bad positioning in front of Diva's alt? You get to live now. Get caught
caught by Zarya's combo ult with Bastion, yeah, the whole team gets to live now. This isn't an ult to counter shit like Zenyatta or Lucio or other characters. This is just an ability that is incredibly overpowered. Then you have Alari, who has a pylon that focuses on the most low health people, where you don't have to do anything all while having a fucking sniper. And yeah, there's Life Weaver, who just sucks ass and makes people mad, taking you out of the fight and ruining tempo even more. Support is such a brain dead class to play, and it's fun looking at the original characters and how some of those original characters just suck ass now, since they aren't broken and overpowered, or require too much brain with less reward than the no brain options. Support just makes DPS feel like shit because now you have big DPS, weak shitty DPS that can't kill anything, and DPS that could heal, change the flow of gameplay, and cure cancer. Everything about this game just sucks, man. Dog shit skins that cost 20 bucks, they're doing skin collabs all while the game's on fire. You cocksucker. And you guys can have that one for free. PvE got canned since the devs wanted to play darts all day. The lore is uninspired, repeating the same ass loop of storytelling for years. Maybe Overwatch should come back. Maybe we should get the band back together. The Muppet movie did it in a more compelling way. Are you with me? But I got a call. We're getting the band back together. No, not me. What? We need you, fuck. You. So when I saw that competition was on the way where I could play as Rocket Raccoon and Star-Lord in the third person, my attention was fully grabbed. You gotta Look, a lot of you didn't have access to the beta since the drop method was terrible. I would know because I bitched on Twitter to get a code. To then pay it forward by trolling the public discord, where I in fact did not have a code. Why are you so fucking negative all the time? I put some hours in this beta, and well, what did I think of it? Yeah, I like it a lot. My overall take is that it's a great game, but not an Overwatch killer. Yeah, let's not do this boring ass introduction done by literally everybody talking about this game. Mine. Of course it's not an Overwatch killer. It's already fucking dead. He blew his own head off years ago with a 3D printed shotgun. The worms eating the corpse are also the player base, and dead men tail no tails. Marvel Rivals seriously has the ability to dominate this new Overwatch clone space race, and already it's got a great start with the highest ceiling. It could also completely crash and burn like Overwatch, but seeing as this is a Marvel game, the devs are probably going to care more because of how much potential you could have with the sandbox. PlayStation's Concord Cord. Valve's deadlock, third person MOBA. Star Wars Hunters or any copy have to deal with the struggle that they aren't interesting to the naked eye. Rivals could suck ass, but having the ability to play as Spider-Man and have my teammates address me as Spider-Man when making callouts does scratch my brain and makes that little kid part of me jump with joy, not gonna lie. So that's gonna be intriguing enough to get a lot of people to even try it. Once again, I love Star-Lord, so yeah, I'm gonna play Star-Lord, and to see that he actually plays like flying Chris Pratt put me in my zen happy place. The only other game that has really made me feel this way was the Heroes vs villains mode in Battlefront 2 when I played as Boba Fett who I also grew up loving. Yeah, the mode is tacked on, it was incredibly half-baked, but being able to fly and fight against Luke Skywalker and Han Solo was a pretty sick feeling, and I still do it to this day. Having that be a fully fleshed out game would be a better option than what the hell they're doing now with Star Wars Hunters. The third person element actually makes Rivals more enjoyable to play for its game loop. A character like Black Panther actually plays like Black Panther. You are preying on people, managing your melee abilities, while having a projectile that makes it so you could have more melee abilities. The character is chaotic and requires a ton of skill, but holy shit will you be rewarded for it. Same with a character like Spider-Man who has fast mobility with a combination of melee attacks and projectiles. Rocket Raccoon has a big machine gun and can fly while healing his team. Hello is for the characters who are pretty good at aiming but isn't a annoying single kill sniper character. Talk, sucker. Because hot take, having more variety of melee based characters is more fun to play and deal with than a cancer ass Widowmaker who brings the tempo to a screeching halt. In general I find myself utilizing more of the kit of each character I'm playing more than I do in Overwatch. A part of this has to do with the fast paced gameplay since almost every character has a mobility option that can be used for multiple purposes, as well as the unique design of each character and how they fit and what they're adapting from Marvel. And on top of this you have destructible environments so it all just makes this game chaotic but more engaging. Like for Venom, you could use a swing for mobility, or to evade from a fight, or to engage in combat. Like this footage here of Black Panther is nuts, and I'm not even crazy good with him, it's just his design kit makes him incredibly fun to play. The whole philosophy of this game is just fun to play. Subjectivity bleeds heavy into these characters. You might not enjoy how Magic plays at all, and prefer a more simplistic character like the Punisher, but get somebody who likes that playstyle and they can be incredibly effective. Same with the supports, who each have unique ways of healing and utility that aren't so broken that it makes the game unfun, but aren't so bland that they make the role a nightmare to play. Same thing applies to the tanks. Going everywhere but broke Like we always do at this time
Yeah, in this game, they are enjoyable to play. Being strong enough that everything feels like a scrap, but not so strong that it turns into a slugfest, like playing tank in Overwatch 2. Oh my god. I'm giving Overwatch 1 a lot of grace, but toward the end of its life, double shield sucked, so even this game managed it to do that better, only having Doctor Strange and Magneto have shield counterplay, and even then, they're both required to be mobile. Also, having two tanks to combo with and have synergy with makes the role feel more collaborative and interactive. And on top of this, you have the four synergy with other roles, which makes the whole chemistry of the team even greater. The four synergy system System makes it so characters could have weird ways to collaborate with each other, like rocket riding Groot for damage reduction or giving an area of unlimited ammo and high fire rate to the Punisher, to even gimmicks like the Hulk letting Iron Man do extra damage because of chemo radiation. Then you have whole new abilities like Spider-Man using a symbiote attack, Namor with an ice octopus, or Magneto getting a broken ass sword. Once again, it just creates more chaos, but good chaos, engaging chaos. It's actually pretty insane how good the flow of the game feels. I don't blame anyone for making assumptions that the game is just an uninspired cash grab using Marvel to get a foot in the door. But it does actually feel like a bunch of action figures going at it. Some shit is broken and unbalanced, but everyone is powerful and unique enough that the flow of gameplay could be satisfying for whatever character you choose to play. So now that the game loop is good, what about everything else? In just its beta state, it's already better than Overwatch 2. New season, and there's still a queue. <laughs> like, what the f what the fuck are we doing? There was only three maps to play, but they fit the art style of the game and were really well designed. There's a battle pass that surprisingly wasn't a headache to get through. There was a full working theater mode, a clan system that Overwatch 2 still doesn't have, fun skins so far with unique displays of customization. It really feels like there's steam in the engine and is why I actually do see this game as a potential Overwatch killer. Our dark truth with Overwatch is that even if 6v6 comes back, so much damage has been done and Blizzard as a company is so different. Overwatch has been in regression long than it was in a good state, and they have done nothing but slow down and rely on loyalty. But now they are at a complete disadvantage to compete with a game like Marvel Rivals. Overwatch having to be original is a big problem. Introducing a new character every six months for it to be something people might not enjoy or care for lore-wise doesn't create enough traction to make people want to obsess with this game anymore. Overwatch was always beloved because of how interactive the lore was with the game, and now most of the mainstream isn't even in the loop anymore of what's going on or who's in the game, and gave up when Blizzard gave up, scrapping the campaign. But in the case of Marvel Rivals, you can be lazy and still get rewarded. There are thousands of comic characters with hundreds of different adaptations that you could rip into this game, as well as pre-written lore and locations that are already beloved for existing. You could do so much with the maps and characters that for at least four years, it should be nothing but easy layups. The things I missed most about Overwatch was the wonder to a new world of characters and seeing all the new stuff getting added while everyone was enjoying the game. Discussing the lore and cinematics with friends, I wasn't discussing how the game was broken every day or how the devs failed the game and how it was left to rot or let everyone down. I was talking about how sick it was that these two brothers have beef, or how Reaper was a part of Overwatch at one point, or what the hell happened to the optimistic Soldier 76. The reason I have so much optimism for Rivals is because I haven't felt this good playing a game in a long time, and there's so much potential for this game to be great, and if there's any better time to compete with the god of this genre, it's now, when he's lazy, confused, and overall defeated. Still succeeding off his once glorious shadow, it's just a beta. So yeah, fix the optimization, make the sound design better, balance the characters better, but overall this game's success is going to be determined by its content output and community balance. Money will come to something great naturally, so focus on the product and loyalty will follow. Don't make bad battle passes and predatory item shops with overpriced bundles while focusing on collaborations while your game is on fire. Take the time to write a world and have people care about the characters, like TF2 and early Overwatch 1. And don't focus on making the game a sweat-filled esport, but rather create a fun game with wacky characters that have a skill curve. Overall, just don't be Overwatch 2. Be Overwatch, and everything might just be fine. This game can end up an amazing competitor or another fumble that could have been amazing. Rivals, make your move. All right, like and subscribe. We out this bitch. Jesus loves you more than you will know.